Hot temperatures consuming southwest Florida. Now at 6, ABC7 is uncovering what you need to do to stay cool as the heat rises. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And southwest Florida isn't the only place dealing with extreme weather. Get more on some of this flooding that we are seeing that is tearing up some of the Midwest. Then a fashion icon being laid to rest where friends and families are gathering to honor designer Kate Spade. Live from ABC7, this is News at 6. Right now, southwest Florida is already off to a warm and muggy start. Take a look at this heat index map. Some areas already feeling temperatures in the triple digits. Oh my goodness, get ready to sweat it out this morning, folks. Thanks for waking up with ABC7. I'm Jen Stacy, And I'm Emily Burris. Now, fortunately, that was this afternoon's heat index, mm -hmm. so brace yourselves. Right. You've got a few hours before it gets <laughs> into the triple digits. But yeah, hot and muggy is going to hit you when you walk out the door this morning. And it's our new normal throughout the summer. That's right. Welcome to Southwest Florida, right? Mm -hmm. Today, ABC7 has team coverage of some of the dangers that can come with these warmer temperatures. And we're getting you more on how to stay safe if we reach some record breakers. We're going to begin this morning with meteorologist Jim Dickey in the Hurricane Center. He has our most accurate forecast. Jim, good morning. Hey, good morning, Emily, Jen. Yeah, off to a warm start. You have to keep in mind, this is the coolest part of the day. We're already at 77 degrees. Two points in the middle 70. So when we switch over and take a look at what it feels like right now across Southwest Florida, especially by the coast, feeling like the low 80s. Although some good news, this is slightly better than what we were seeing yesterday when some spots in Collier County were already feeling like the 90s at sunrise. Still, again, hot start means it's going to be a hot finish as we work our way into the afternoon. That's for sure. There's no rain to track right now over land with our real time radar. I have been watching some downpours this morning. Setting up off the coast of Collier, we've been seeing a little bit of lightning with this too. So if you're waking up Naples, Marco, you're seeing flashes of lightning off in the distance. It's from that and they're not moving towards the coast. They're actually stationary, if not moving a bit further away from the shoreline here this morning. So yes, it is going to be a hot day all around today. Clear and sunny skies as we start things out that will help these temperatures climb and climb quickly. By 12 noon, already into the low 90s. Highs this afternoon in the mid to low 90s. And a couple showers and thunderstorms getting going later on here today as well. I'll take a closer look at where and when the best chances for some cooling rain will be. It's coming up back here in about 10 minutes. Right now, a lot of people already thinking of ways to stay cool, especially with those temps feeling like they're in the triple digits come the afternoon. Sure, one of the most popular ways to cool down is with that good old AC unit. ABC 7's Julie Andell is live this morning, getting you more on how to make sure your air conditioner doesn't go out on you during this hot weather. Julianne, good morning. Well, Cool Air, which is a heating and air conditioning company in Fort Myers, is very busy right now trying to keep up with demand as they say they get the most calls when the heat temperature rises. They spent the day Monday making service calls saying at this time of year, most people find their air conditioners struggling to keep up. That's why they're replacing filters and advising people to change their thermostat batteries so that the AC doesn't shut off. And as people look for ways to escape the heat, the experts say one of the best ways is to keep your air on throughout the day. It is better to keep your home cool even during the day and then it won't work as hard when you're home and your home will be more comfortable to you. Now, Cool Air says to keep your home at the same temperature. If you turn it down when you go to work and then turn it back up when you get home, you're actually making it work harder and wasting more energy. Reporting live in Fort Myers, Julianne Dell, ABC 7. Julianne, thanks. I did not know that. I've had mine <laughs> up and down all the time, so we'll try something different. Well, in East Naples, doesn't this look nice? There's a new option to beat the summer heat. A brand new aquatic center now open at the Eagle Lakes Community Park. It's just off of US 41, and even though the grand opening for the park is happening next Friday, they are doing soft openings now, open for a trial phase. The park costs more than $9 million to build. It has baby pools, water slides, even a big pool for lap swimming. The park has been in the works for years. It's definitely an added bonus to have something super close, super uh, inexpensive to be able to bring him to go have fun. It's easy to get to, it's fun, it's cheap, and the kids are happy, so that makes mom happy. All your county commissioners still have to officially approve the admission prices, but they are expected to be around $3 per person depending on your age. 
High temperatures can be dangerous, especially for kids. One app is aiming to keep our kids safe from heat stroke in the car. It's called the backseat. Once you download this, this app will automatically remind you when it's when you start up and reach a certain speed in the car about the temperatures. It'll send you alerts throughout the day after the trip to make sure that everyone got out of the vehicle. It will sound an alarm if you do not turn the notifications off. And all of this heat can help to fuel some of those Florida thunderstorms. Now, to keep up with all of the severe weather alerts we see in southwest Florida, you can get our most accurate forecast and much more on our ABC7 weather app. It's easy to download. Just go search ABC7 WX. You can find it in both Google Play and in the Apple Store. The flooding in the upper Midwest has left at least one man dead. In Wisconsin, the Ashland County Sheriff's Office confirms the body of a man was found about 60 feet away from his pickup truck. That's where the floodwaters were more than six feet deep. Meanwhile, in Illinois, another man is lucky to be alive. A group of people made a very daring rescue to try to get him out of his car. The rescue, as you see here, was caught on video. Andrew Spencer has more. Dad, be careful! Brianna Pickett posted this video on Facebook of her dad, Mark, and several other people in Rockford, Illinois, working to free a man trapped inside his car. Minutes later, the driver emerges there in the green shirt, and as the men climb off the back of the car, the front end quickly sinks into the water. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God! The flooding in Illinois follows that in Wisconsin and on Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Heavy downpours opened sinkholes and washed out roads, prompting disaster declarations from the governors of both states. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation is going to work with uh, local highway commissioners and uh, public works departments to make sure um, uh, we get roads moving. Crews have a lot of work to do fixing roads as heavily damaged as this one in Houghton, Michigan. And if you think the destructive power of nature is impressive, you're not the only one. Some people in northern Wisconsin took the lighthearted approach of getting a better look. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. 6.07 is the time moving overseas now. Today, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is expected to visit China. He's expected to be there for a two-day trip. This is his third visit since March. The trip comes just a week following his landmark summit meeting with President Trump in Singapore. President Trump is raising the stakes in his trade dispute with China. He is now considering a 10 percent tariff on an extra $200 billion worth of Chinese exports. This move came after Trump announced new tariffs on China on Friday and Beijing retaliated dollar for dollar. The president said Monday the latest tariffs are a response to China's retaliation. Family and friends will say their final farewell to designer Kate Spade Thursday in her hometown. Spade took her own life earlier this month in her Manhattan apartment. A service will be held in Kansas City, Missouri on Thursday afternoon. In lieu of flowers, her family is asking that donations be made to the ASPCA or to Wayside Waifs, a no-kill shelter in Kansas City. New this morning, a Florida toddler is expected to make a full recovery after being left in a hot car. A Seminole County woman, Casey Culler, is accused of leaving a three-year-old in that car. Deputies say the child was overheated and drifted in and out of consciousness when they found her. The car wasn't running and the windows were rolled up. Deputies say that Keller took three children to a liquor store late Saturday. When she returned, returned to her home, she only took some of the kids out and forgot the three-year-old inside. A Lehigh Acres firefighter is now fighting for his life after his co-workers rescued him. Rick Pride went into cardiac arrest while working out at the Lehigh Acres firehouse. His colleagues heard him fall and raced to help. Right now, the veteran firefighter is in serious condition in the hospital. One of his fellow firefighters promising to help him pull through. He's one of our key team members. I mean, you know, we're a family. We work together. We come here daily. We're going to stand by his bedside until the day that we can take him home. Some of the men and women of that fire department are staying with Pride and his wife and daughter at the hospital around the clock. Firefighters are also wearing Pride Strong wristbands and collecting donations for his recovery. The mayor of Sanibel wants more water from Lake O sent south and east. He also wants more water held to the north. Kevin Ruane says that that is what's needed to clear up our shorelines of the brown water. 
He's asking the Army Corps of Engineers to make those changes, and he's also working to get other cities like Cape Coral and Fort Myers Beach on board. That's where we're trying to get in front of it earlier and have people understand, so it doesn't have to be a lost summer. We have started starting sending water south, and that is, a, that is going on as we speak. With less rain falling in the last several days and water levels dropping at Lake O, Ryan says that it is possible that the Corps could stop sending water to our coast by this Thursday. There's a new approach to help grow seagrasses in the Caloosahatchee. Speaking of water quality, thousands of acres of seagrass have been lost in the river with some of the water quality issues we've been having. But there's another issue. When seagrass is replanted, manatees, sea turtles, and ducks are eating a lot of those grasses before it can produce seeds. Water quality advocacy groups started working with homeowners trying to restore the river. They're planting patches of seagrass and then they're covering them with those big cages. That will protect the grass and allow it to grow and seed. Yesterday, they put about 25 cages down in front of homes, which will then be closely monitored. These plants need to be maintained. You can plant them and walk away and it's a, it's a craps game, or you can take your time, maintain them and grow the plants out and make sure that they stay there over a long time. The Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program says this project is like life support for some of these grasses. Well, you might be making some of the final adjustments on your summer travel plans, but be careful if they involve your pet. Coming up next at 6, find out about one airline's new policy that may require you to leave your furry friends at home. Plus, the battle for the World Cup continues, but we're going to show you how a grandmother may have helped lead one team to victory. Ride to work will feature quiet weather here this morning. It is going to be warm and humid, though, but plenty of sunshine expected as we work through the morning hours, leaving us with a very hot afternoon. Off Southwest Florida's most accurate forecast is coming up right back here after the break.